Well, I came down to visit Bob, and he brought out a couple of these awesome saws from his collection. 266, 625, John Thread, 268, a 162, a little hot rod right there. The only thing I don't see in here is a 272. But a lot of the saws that we've been kind of kicking around the last couple of years, and I see there's sort of a resurgence online in the interest in these things. They're sitting right here. Yeah, so what do you want what do you want to do? Do you want to introduce what we're doing here? Yeah. Do you want me in the picture or you want out of the picture? Well, you might as well I don't as everybody probably knows. I really don't like being on camera or looking at the camera. That's why I'm always talking to him. Let me I'm go see like, I'm not like some of these, because there are some guys out there that are so ego driven. So this was your idea. You gotta kind of explain what we're doing here. So this is this is a, I think uh, what I would like to do. I have not yet collected my thoughts, but the original idea was to do. 2.0 on the uh, saw college for the 61 through 272 series of chainsaws. Okay. Yeah. So I think what we're doing, I, I should get a beer in me. I'm really one beer. Really, really start. <laughs> but uh, so I guess what this is about is there's some more renewed interest according to Walter. According to Walter. Uh, no, really, because well, you said that there's there's people that are showing more interest in these things. Yeah. And. Um, so this is really, you know, not to be repetitive for the first video on this series of saws, but to really focus on how to keep them going, what's left to keep them going, parts-wise, what can you do, and interchangeability. So that's, that's interesting. We have to clarify. The original one, we went through the different models and the different variations of the models. Yeah, it was like a historical look. So we may touch on that some today, but that's not the main focus. So let's just get that out of the way up front. Now what it is, is 30 years have gone by, and there's a renewed interest in these things. Uh, how do you get them to a running state? Where do you go for parts? What kind of things do you need to look for in order to make things work? And what can you do to some of the oddball models, which may not have a readily uh, available supply of parts, either aftermarket or OEM, to get it running again? How's that? Yeah, right. Yeah, what do you got for... OEM parts, aftermarket parts. Um, there was, I, I forget how many we figured, but there's probably eight cylinder top ends originally with this whole class of saws. And there's there's three left that you can still get. And the only one really of interest is the 272 kit. You can buy a 61 kit yet. Um, you can get the 268 open port kit, which really isn't a bad run and saw at all, but it's about the same money as, and even within the aftermarket, you know, you got OEM prices, you got aftermarket prices, and in each case, they're going to be really close to almost the same kind of money. So why bother with the... Yeah, so you're yeah. not, so it's not like it's bad, it's not like if you got a good running one, you got to throw it away, but if you're going to buy one, unless somebody's selling it for like $25, <laughs> you're stupid to buy that. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the premise. Um, if you have like an old uh, 61, I was able to blend a 272 top end, but it required a fair amount of, of clever things. Like the mufflers were different. I had to modify the muffler and I had to make some spacers, you know, because uh, they had different size bolts. Yeah. So I had to make some tubes for spacers inside the muffler. Then. Uh, that right. doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that goes from a 61 to a 272 needs to do all that stuff. That's true. Um, if you got all the original parts, you can use... The same and muffler. I, and I like to use as many of the original parts to retain, A, the, the look that, that I, I don't like, you know, stuff that's kind of hokey looking. And, um, and also, air filter um, clearance and things like that. You, know, you had no choice with the white top 61. 
because it won't clear the taller cylinder. This thing definitely, this is an early saw, and you can tell the early saws by the, uh, the center screw here. Top cover. Yeah, that right there. This yep. is, and you can see this, this thing does slant down a little bit, which gives you almost no room. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. So you're, this is an original muffler. Yeah, no, that was the actual 61's muffler. Yeah, so? What I did was, what I couldn't put, what I was saying is I couldn't put the 272 muffler on. Oh, no, okay, yeah. Yeah, you can on this one. Um, but not, what if, not all of the, the the twin coil top ends, some of them will kind of clear the newer muffler, but it's still going to probably melt it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I always try to use the original muffler. I don't think... Yeah, but what I had to do on that muffler was those bolts have a different diameter than on the 61 had. The 272 had larger bolts. Yeah, it does. The diameter was different. So what I had to do is I had to cut a couple of little pipes to build like the spacers so that when I cinched up on the outside of the muffler, it didn't crush the muffler. Because the ones that came, the, the sheet metal tubes that came in there were too small. Have any problem with this one? This is a stock 266 muffler, right? And the studs on the other end of this are the right diameter to go into the cylinder and the right thread, yeah, on the 266, yeah. So, anyway, that's the rule. It may be, it may be unique. Well, this was like a 1970s saw right here. But the, but the point is that this thing right here is stuff like that is not like rocket science. It's just, you know, you got to be willing to go to Lowe's and find some hardware in order to make stuff like that work. So I, if I remember correctly, and this is a long time ago, was that is a stock 272 top end. This is a twin coil case. I had to hack the cover in order to make it fit. But like I said, when I split the muffler, I had to come up with little tubes and drill the muffler a little bit so I could put the larger muffler bolts with a different thread into the, the cylinder because it was larger than the 61. And if you pull that off, I have the 61's uh, filter holder, which I also had to drill out a little bit to use the carburetor screws that a 272 needs. And that one, I've had continual issues with the ignition because the plug wires are a little short and they push up against the fins and when that happens the darn thing starts cross-firing into the cylinder and you lose rpms and drives you nuts trying to figure out what's wrong with that saw cross-firing uh, what else do you call it when it when it arcs into the cylinder most people will call it a short oh okay shorts <laughs> all right I got, i'm just curious here fit yeah yeah it does it clears everything um, there is a little more room here well I need one of those at some point uh, and of course it wouldn't have that unique look of a Franken saw with the holes stuck in there yeah well the point that we want to make with this is um, you know that's why I said don't start making assumptions and you know what you have to do to these white tops or the early and similar, the 162 tops would have clearance issues, and um, not only with the, the stuff that Walt had to deal with here, but also that's why you had to stay with that air filter. Instead of the same thing here, instead of this one here. Right. So you have what? Two different filters. Yeah. Yeah. And these are hard to find, by the way. I got plenty of them if you need more. <laughs> yeah. These are these are easy to find. Oh well, yeah, these are still it's still a current part. Um, and even though, like when we get into the red ones here, even though the John's root all came with this filter, right? This pointed filter that rises up in the center will fit under the John's root filter cover. That's good to know. See yeah, that's the kind of stuff. You can't get this anymore. The reason that they use this is because if you recognize this. That's also the filter 
that was used on the 930s. 930s, yeah. Right, and this will not fit, it fits on, it, on that, but it won't fit on the 930. Well, that's good to know as well. Yeah, so, you never have a 930 yet, do you? No, I've been, that's one of those, the, the two holy grails for me is a 930 and a good running uh, 621, although I do have a running 621. Yeah, did you make a longer wire? I did. Okay. Because on mine here, I've got a similar situation. This is a, a twin coil saw. This is on a 266. And... That looks alright. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. You can, you know, wrap something around there if you weren't sure if you had it. And here again, all these things aren't identical. Yeah. Um, they had a couple of different ignitions. You could still get these ignitions, but it's stupid money. Yeah, really? Well, one of them's 100, one of them's 120. So it's a set. It's two hundred twenty dollars. Wow! And nobody wants to do that. Well, uh, there's aftermarket on those. Mine, I think, came out of Brazil or something like that. Yeah. So let's uh, let's review because we just dumped a whole bunch of information at once. One was the air filter difference, and he sh he shows those. I've got this single screw one. That two sixty six has got the two screws. And the John's Red had the same two screw one that worked on the 930s. And actually, the, the relevant piece of information is he's got these, but I don't know if these are available aftermarket, these filters. I don't know. Are they still available from Husky? Uh, no. So that's, the, uh, that's no longer available, so you have to treat them like gold. But the one that he has that works on a 288 will fit on the older uh, 266. So that's, that's gold, that's good information, and that's a, that's a part number that still works. Last but not least, one of the things I've had to mess with is the length of the, uh, the plug wire. And it looks to me like with Bob's, you've got yours from, that's a Husqvarna OEM ignition? Yeah, that's the same ignition that was on the saw. So that plug wire is actually long enough. Mine was too short. Mine was more like this one. Oh, where was it? This one. Oh, this one. Mine was like that. Yep. And that does not, that, you can't make that work on the, the 272. Not well. Yeah, it's clear that that has... Uh, but they also cut the fence. Yep. As discombobulated as we can be, we're going to start out in the circle with a 266. A guy got a 266 that's blown up. Yeah, and there's two ways to go. If you can uh, clean the cylinder up and stick a piston in it, um, that's always the easy way to go. So bring both of those over here. Originally, the 266 came with. I guess I should have had this all opened up. The full skirt pistons. All right, and then these are the pistons I get from my buddy Chris out there at Saw Salvage. All right, that was the original 266 piston. He said, well, you can't get that. Well, it doesn't really matter because it's completely interchangeable. They're both 50 millimeter. It's completely interchangeable with the later piston, which is still available OEM from Husky with that style. But in any of these closed port saws, you got to have a window piston in one way or another. You don't want the closed port, there's, there's a 50 millimeter closed port piston, and you don't want it because the saw will run like a pig. Well, the, the piston is part of the wall of the, of the transfer. Yeah, and it's just got that weird, it just runs like garbage. Yeah. Uh, but either of these pistons will work in a 266, 268, or 670. They're all 50 millimeter. So if you got one and you end up, it's like, well, you know, you can save the cylinder, then that piston works. And don't get caught up with uh, different part numbers. Now, I don't know if the Johnson may have a different part number for their 670 pistons, um, but like we got the, um, <laughs> we got a 670 kit here, which is used, it's really buffed out really nice. It's in really good shape. And you see, you pointed this out before, they were a little ahead of the curve here. The stuff that you get on current saws now, they was a, it was an intake boot instead of the intake block. It had the little rubber ring in there that we see on all the new saws now. So 
One of the reasons the 670 was uh, what it was. Both of these saws ended up with two different starting points, but both of these saws ended up with 272 kits on there. All right. This one was a 625, and what we have over here is uh, this is a complete 625 open pour. I think these things are lame and boring. These in the six in the 61s, I just I just don't think they're very impressive at all, and they all kind of deserve to be replaced, even if they don't blow up. Because for me, the power they put out with the weight of the saw. It's just not worth it, really. So anyway, this is the whole thing. Um, I think it's better, here again, to try to use what you got. The things that you have to change are the muffler bolts. And we should probably move one of these, uh, get these air filters out of here. Get the screwdriver go. You know, the saw that you blow up, you know, some of it, the intake stuff, you're not going to be able to use. So there's really four parts, if you count the, the two bolts as one part, that you got to get to convert a 266 or this 625 to a 272. And we're just going to talk about that, I guess, because as we said before, the only cylinder really worth buying is the 272 cylinder, as far as what you can get. All right, so a lot of guys are going to do that, and you got a few hurdles that you got to get over. And um, so the parts are: you got the muffler bolts. You have to get those long sleeved muffler bolts to go all the way through. Carburetor bolts. Uh, yeah, carburetor. What am I thinking? You know what? Because we were talking before. Yeah. So. Um, and you're going to have uh, to get the intake block and the gaskets on either side. These all have slightly different part numbers. I think it's better to go with the original filter holder. Whatever came with a saw. Yeah, because you know what, here again, I mean, people that get real fussy and measure everything, this one's like a you know, half a millimeter bigger, you know what? If that's important to you, that's fine. But to me, it doesn't really make a difference. These saws both run really good. I've got a fair amount of time on that one. Yeah. And I thought I was thought it was an injustice that John's would never got the 52 millimeter top end, so there should have been a model 672. So I made my own. I think you got one kind of in the works yourself. Actually, I do. I have a 625, which is in the process of being modified. So the review, he needed to use the filter holder that comes with the saw. Yeah. The carburetor bolts that go for 272 with a larger diameter, and you may have to modify the filter holder just a little bit to let them get through. Uh, no, you don't. They slide right through. Yeah. And then, of course, the uh, the intake uh, block, the manifold. Yeah, and then the two gaskets. Two gaskets. Okay. Um, if you're starting with a 625 or a 670, you got the added little puzzle to solve of you know how to pulse the carburetor. So this is how the 670 and the 625 are pulsed. Okay. Um, the way to get around that. Uh, I know this this is going to be an, an editing nightmare because I keep walking back and forth. No, it keeps but, it interesting. <laughs> it's instead of a instead of one boring lecture, there's a lot of motion going on. Instead of uh, saws cutting wood, it's you going back and forth like a freaking yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just to, this is from a 49 SP, which just for illustration purposes, um, any HS carb really is going to be able to solve one of the problems. You want to get rid of that thing. You can plug that and leave it there or any other HS carb you just take off and you swap that. Okay? Take the cap, take, take that cover and put it on your carb. Right. But you still got to pulse it. Right. So now, let's just assume that you take this off. Now you're going to have to pulse it. And all the carburetor is going to be pulsed in the same spot on the, with the block thing. And you kind of where your gasket goes here. This gasket really it's like an HS gasket, so it fits all these. All right, so right where that hole is, you have to drill in about a quarter of an inch. Um, if we take this off, I can show you how far you got to drill. So but anyway, a there's a little, huh? There's a little passage in there. Yeah, right. You'll, it'll just, you'll see where it's got to go. 
And there's also already on the, the ones that are not drilled, there's also a little indentation so you know where to stick the drill. As long as you go find it, you don't really have to make a mark with the gasket or anything. There's an indentation there. So that that's what you have to do. What I did here, that's what I did. So I went and I pulsed that. Because it's going to pulse through the block yeah. to the carburetor to that hole you just drilled. Therefore, you don't need the hose to the cylinder like the John Shred has. To pulse. Yeah. So they did that because they went to the rubber boot and there's no passage through the boot. Right. So the way they had to pulse the carburetor was with a tube from the cylinder. Whereas right. the Husqvarna yeah. still has a block that has a hole in it. And then you just have to line your carburetor up to that hole, punch a hole if you got a giant thread. Now while we got these side by side, the one of the reasons you want to stick with, if you're doing a 625 or a 670, that you want to stick with the original car, um, is the high idle on the John Deere to sit with the choke. That's got this extra stuff in there. The, uh, the high idle on the Huskies is set with this thumb latch on the, tr on the trigger thing here. Right, and if you have a John Strad handle, you don't got that latch. Right, so there's no way to set a high idle without a... Uh, this one's actually slipping, as you can see. So that piece needs to be changed. Um, but yeah, so it's a better idea if you can stick with the, the John Strad carb. Now you can so see the same, something else there. So you have the same linkage. There's something else there, uh, <coughs> if you notice it. And the other thing too is this choke lever goes in a different way. So the message is when you're converting a red, stick with the red carburetor, modify it to right. pulse through the block. And if you have orange, of course, just stick with the carburetor for other reasons. Yeah. You don't have to worry about pulsing. You don't have to worry about the uh, linkage or nothing else. But the John Fred has a unique linkage for its choke lever. Um, and also the set the high idle. It's all different on the John Fred than the Husky. The other thing you're going to see here that you haven't pointed out yet was... Is this is this carburetor is from the 670? They had this extra thing here. They call it a compensating carb. Compensating carb. I have carb. no idea what that means. Yeah. I mean, it's you know I. Compensating carb. I, I, you know, I, I I looked up a couple things. Yeah, it has the compensating carb, and well, that's you know somebody from Old Tech Tilton takes. I have no idea what that means. Huh. Tank had an extra hole in it. Oh. It's the 670s that came with that carburetor had an extra hole in it. Okay. So anyway, to kind of repeat it, the more stuff that you can stay with from the original saw, the better off you are. Because sometimes you start introducing other things, there's enough riddles to solve with these things that you don't need to introduce anymore. Oh. Now if you're going from a 268, everything you need is already there. It's just bolt on the cylinder. Yeah. Yeah, the 268 and the 272 share the same intake stuff. The 266, the big difference is the uh, the intake block. Yeah. Other than that, everything else swaps over, right? Right. The good old 630 Super is got the same top end and all as the 162. Same intake system. They did change that intake system over the years, and here's another thing where. Um, you want complete saws because they were trying to solve the problem. The early 162s uh, were more prone than the later saws to that heat transfer going through the block to the carburetor. So they started messing around with uh, different bolts and things like that. And they went to, they en ended up with a sleeve bolt. So sticking with what you got, you know, another thing you could buy, you know, okay, say I get a 266, this and this and the 266 with the original top end, they all use sort of sort of the same intake block. But those there's those changes based on the year of manufacture. So that's here so, again you can run into problems where the guy says on eBay, yeah, this is a block that for a 266, you get it. And hey you, you, you hold it up, hey this looks good. It is right that, but your hardware is wrong. So hang <laughs> so, on, hang on. Let, let, let me there's one thing I have to digest. So this cylinder right here, this is for the 162, that's a 48 millimeter. It's the same cylinder that's on the 630. Right. Is it pulsed the same? Oh yeah. So it has basically the same intake block, all that stuff. 
Yeah, see, the charger is going to have... Uh, my fingers are getting cold there, even with the gloves on. It's cold. Um, the charger is still going to have their own... Leakage. Input. Yeah. So high idle set with a choke on the 630, yeah. but the carburetor and the intake block are pulsed through the intake block like the Husky, not like the uh, not like the 670. Where is that? So it doesn't have this style. It has the standard Husqvarna. And that's why you don't see a, a pulse line at the top of the 630 carburetor. It's the same cylinder, same intake block, and w with the exception of the linkage, the same carburetor as on this one, the 162 top end and all that the stuff. The top ends are more easily interchangeable than the carburetors because of all this stuff that we're talking about. Right. If you go um, and mix the John's Root carburetor on the Husky or vice versa, you have in addition to the high idle thing, the linkage and stuff, yeah. The choke lever stuff. Right. So you can't use, and I know you could probably use the John's Root choke lever, but you know, you, here again, so basically, stick stick with a carburetor yeah. choke that came with a saw case, whatever you have. With yeah, because look, the, the, you know, this is the same on both of these. Yeah, the link but, is uh, the same. Yeah, you know, this choke lever is longer. It hooks up, and you look where the, the tab on the carburetor for the choke, where you pull it, is all kind of you're pulling from the top, and then on the Huskies, you know, you're pulling from the bottom. I mean, it's the same thing. It chokes the saw, so it's really not a big deal. Little details. So basically, again, the high idle linkage and all that choke is different on the John's Red than the Huskies. Now, the original premise was uh, try to stick with as much parts as you can on these. But the second thing is, can all these be moved to 272 if you want to? And the answer is yes, if you've listened to what we've been saying. Yeah, but there's, a, there's one more thing you need to know. Well, there's more than that. But here, over here, we'll go back to these two. Um... This is the later model single coil saw. This is the 625 that went to the 272. All right, and you see we were able to retain the deco. Ah, okay. because there's room. Yeah. Now, any of these other saws with the original metal chain break, the Sweetomatic chain break, you can't. You can't do it because this, all this stuff back here, it won't allow the deco to, to, to open up. Right. So you're like, you're permanently, so you can't use it. So you gotta go with the plug. And that's why when the 268 came out, it did not have a deco. Another interesting so they wrinkle. Did, well, not, I'm not saying that's why they did it, but when it, it, they didn't have a deco on the 268, so the early 268s had the metal brake, and then the later ones went to the plastic. So I see a 66. What's the difference between a 266 and a 66? Well, this is... A completely unique, this is what we call the odd duck of the family. Um, these were made in Yugoslavia. Ah, okay. okay. So anyway, that's just, so, so the, basics, the basic wrap up is, all these can be converted if they're blown up and everything else is in good shape. You can rebuild all these saws. You could use aftermarket top ends, OEM top ends are still available, they're kind of reasonably priced. They're not, you know, like some of the, like that 372 kit now is so the o stupid money. Yeah, the OEM 272 is still available. Yes. And who makes that? Colvin Schmidt. Okay. Is it as good as the old Maley's? Yeah, cause that, and that's what both of these are. And they both run really strong. Okay. How much do they cost? Just ballpark. Around two. Two hundred bucks. Yeah, I haven't looked it up in a while. I mean, stuff's moving. That's why I said around, because prices are fluid and a lot of fluctuation right now. So, other than cylinders, what other parts of those saws that can be retroed to the older ones all the way up through the two seven twos are still available? Side covers, ignitions, stuff like that. What about bearings? Are they six two zero two C threes? Yeah, they're kind of the same bearing. What about seals? Yep. That's all available? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the seals, like the 225 or whatever. Yeah, I go with Husky numbers. Refer to them your way. 
Well, the reason why you refer to them that way is is you assume that you can't get them through a Husky dealer. You don't go to a you know a supply house and say, hey, I need a 6202C3 bearing with eight balls instead of seven, and steel versus nylon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This bugs me. Why? It's, it's not right. I'm just gonna have to go in there and replace that stuff. This is older. Another little oddity is the early ones, all the plastic, the caps, the wrap on the, the handle, this stuff here, the trigger was black. And at some point they turned everything gray. I know a, another they, issue. Those parts do interchange, obviously. Gas cap and oil tank caps. Yeah. Where the heck do I find more of these? What, the vented cap? No. These yeah, that's a vented cap. They're tiny though. Huh? They're small. Yeah. Is it the same as the John's thread? And are they still available, or do they have to be aftermarket? They're not available either way. Um, for the early, 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 I'm just in here. Yeah. On the, my, my 162. So they're smaller than the... With the chain on them on the inside. Yeah. So I got this one here. You gave me this, because mine was broke. Yeah. Remember that? That's hard to find, that piece. But you can't find them. Then these... I think that's the same as a, as a modern Husky. You could put a flippy cap on there yeah, if you, you wanted to. you can put a flippy cap in there. Some of those, you can still get the original ones with the flat gasket that's on the bottom. It doesn't have the O-ring and it doesn't have the other outside gasket. What spark plug are they supposed to have? Resistor plug or standard plug? Well, I think everything should have a resistor plug. A lot of stuff. How about switches? Because these are pretty easy to find aftermarket. But like on the John's thread, these little toggles are tough to find. Right. And I'm forever putting them on backwards. I think you can still get those. Handlebars, are they available? Uh, and someone rolls one yes. by a tractor. Yes. Pull starts. Uh... You can only get the new one. And we'll, well, there's a couple of different pull they starts. Interchange. Do they interchange? Yeah. I don't know if they. You sure? Um, the different starters have different pulleys. Yeah. The, uh, do we have a. Um, no, we don't. The, uh, the 268s and the, and the 61s. And the 272s with the, the large decal take a different pulley because that whole starter is out farther. Right. So the shank on the pulley has to be has to be different. So there's two separate pulley arrangements you have to worry about between the different series of saws. Yeah, and, and then, well, there's more than that. <laughs> the, so that's a whole other story. Well, some of the early Johnsrud pulleys, uh, the post on the inside of the starter was uh, narrower. So you got a small post and a large post. See, there's no end to this. And there's another variation. Yeah, I mean, just, you could just let it flow because it's so it's such a mess. Um, yeah, you know, this, this forces everybody to watch the whole damn boring video. There you go. <laughs> but, but you know. Well, I, but yeah, so you, you here again. You order. Well, yeah. Well, that should fit. But you know, and I'm not only because I've been immersed in this stuff for so long. That's why I know most of this crap. Even because I call them carburetor ball or muffler ball doesn't mean, you know. So you have, a, you know, the small post and the large post starter pulleys. There's, they got a whole drawer full of different pulleys. And, uh, but that's another thing. Just, you got to be careful when you're, you know, a lot of this stuff is lost. You can, you can get every service pull ever printed through the dealer site. All of them, it's all there. It, and it goes back quite a ways, but uh, I mean, like to, to the L77s, but it's not on the consumer site. So, unless you have access to all that, and, you know, I try not to make mistakes, everybody does, 
but I look stuff up. A lot of people make stuff up. <laughs> and, and that's where some of this misinformation comes from. Well, there is another area that I actually had done a video on, and that's the different crankshafts and the different flywheels. Yep. Because uh, the different cranks, you have the 10 by 1 uh, flywheel side and then the 10 by 1 reverse on the clutch side. But on some of the older ones, you had a half 13 reverse on the clutch side. And let me tell you what, it is hard to find... Uh, the clutches that spin onto that and it also has a slightly different uh, diameter bearing. And then depending uh, on whether it was a uh, twin coil or a single coil, there's a different flywheel. There was a change after the switch to the single coil saws and again there's a service bolted on that and yeah, I forgot the binder. But uh, there's a service bolted on that and it changes, it, you know, they, they don't interchange. The flywheels are, are different. Because it's out of time. When you look at, there's a sheet. It's it's a it's in an IPL update. There's two pages of parts that are different from the early saws to the later single coil saws, and it's amazing that we have the interchangeability that we do. Because it's, it was an extensive, extensive redesign. It almost should have been called like a new family, but close enough that you know, we can do a lot of the stuff we're talking about. 87, 88 is when they, you know, they, they, they switch from the 266 to the 268 and all that. Well, I'll go back and review what I did. I, I, I ran into the flywheel thing by uh, accident and hard knocks. I had a guy come in with a saw that had a busted crank and I figured I'd go pull it out of the parts bin and get it going for him and then discovered that not only are the threads different, but the key location is different. So you have to match the flywheel to the crankshaft to the ignition system. That was a net, net, net. And sometimes, you know, rummaging through the bits and pieces in the parts bin, that's not quite as obvious. <laughs> yeah, and we've got to admit, too, to a lot of guys that might just have, like, one saw that they want to get going, that uh, we kind of take it for granted that we have piles and piles of, of parts of stuff. Yeah. And... You know, we don't really usually have to go on eBay and find an obscure part. It's just you got to go leaf into a box of stuff and, oh, there it is, you know. And it's, it's a little harder for a guy that just gets a saw, like he buys it at a yard sale, and it doesn't run. Well, I just get that, get that online. Some of the stuff's easy to find, some of it's not. Well, I, I have to say that uh, in not having, you know, a uh, parts list where there's a difference is defined like that a lot of times it's kind of hunt and peck yeah. you know in uh you know i get i get these questions all the time about what's the part number for x y or z i've got no freaking idea i like bob was saying my parts bin and my uh, inventory system is a bunch of boxes of old beat up saws so you just sort of rummage and figure out what works <laughs> bob's got the advantage of having knowledge on top of that you know i just have to advise people to do the same thing I did and that's just sort of hunt and peck your way through. You'll figure it out. <laughs> well at least I, I didn't try to bolt the carburetor to the exhaust.